What's going on guys, it's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and in today's Destiny video we're going to take a look at some of the better points of the weekly update dropped yesterday by Bungie. Now if you guys missed the update I will link it in the video description if you guys do want to read through it all. Now in this update we saw the mention of class specific weapons, weapons exclusive to the Titan, the Warlock and the Hunter. Something a pal of mine picked up on quite some time back when he noticed the Warlock icon on the side of a weapon. At the time I dismissed this and never thought it was going to be something Bungie would implement into the game. How wrong was I and the many people who hated on the video he made, which I will link in the video description if you guys do want to go and check that out. Now with these class specific weapons, I do see a few issues that may occur. Issues like a class being chosen over others because of a certain weapon. This can amount to much worse things as we all know how Bungie have a habit of nerfing things that are overused. Maybe these class specific weapons though will be identical to each other, just different in designs. Who knows, we just have to wait and see. There wasn't much information dropped on these, but I'm sure we will find out more in the near future. Now a major part of this update was the weapon foundries. Now we have known these weapon foundries for quite a while, and the first weapon foundry mentioned in the update is Hacker. Now Hacker have been building reliable tools built for soldiers in the field. Hacker values simplicity over intricacy, function over flair. Hacker weapons all start with a tightly focused band of base stats that don't spike as high or low as other weapon families. Granting a solid foundation for growing the weapon. On a hacker talent grid, you'll see a simplified set of scopes that work best for the weapon. Front loaded perk nodes with the stat upgrade options occupying the final column. Hacker perk selection is focused on offensive actions and combat tactics. Hacker pulse rifles fire a burst of 4 rounds with damage adjusted to match the damage per second of a 3 round burst pulse rifle, meaning the pulse rounds do less damage individually but are equal as a group. Fire time between bursts is slightly faster. Now there are a few weapons in the game already under this foundry and they include the bronze maya malta, the silvered hushwind, the black trunk, the silvered mullen and many more. Now what we've seen from taking game pvp gameplays, the hacker auto rifle also seen in this update which I do have gameplay of which I'll link in the video description if you guys want to check it out. It reminds me of the scar h from my modern warfare days and I do like the punch this thing packs in that pvp. I also overall like the gritty straight up style of the hacker weapon coming with the Taken King and cannot wait to see more, I really can't. The next weapon foundry is a Molen and these are the pioneers of energy weaponry. A Molen is the first foundry to experiment beyond the world of combustion ballistics. Sporting lighter, ergonomic frames, and Marlon weapons all start with generous base handling stats to build from. A Marlon talent grids focus on behavioral perks over stat customization. Legendary talent grids are the only weapons that offer three perks. One has the first non scope upgrade, and two has a binary choice in the final column. Perk selection favors perks that are energy based and slash or go beyond the weapon to interact with the welder's abilities or status. Now in my opinion, Amalan offer easily the best looking weapons of the three foundries we see in the update. But that for me at the moment is where the interest in Amalan ends. I've seen gameplay of the Scout and a couple of other weapons from Amalan in action and I ain't really feeling them at the moment. But my opinion could change once I get a hands on with them. Now there is already an exotic weapon in the game available for us to use and it's the hard light which is made by Amalan. Again design wise it looks incredible but that's where my fascination ends, completely ends. Now if you do want to see a few Amalan weapons in action I'll link another video in the video description so check that out. The last foundry we have in the update is Suros. Now some say the best weapon for a guardian is the one they can customise to match their intent. Suros believes in options, weapons can be repurposed for a variety of combat situations. Suros talent grids offer two columns of two stat perks, granting more options for changing weapon stats than any other foundry. The single behaviour perk is grounded in the middle of the talent grid as a focus point for the weapon's core potential. If you want a weapon that can flex from close quarters to range, quick to powerful, fast handling to hard hitting, or with the swap of a few nodes, Suros it is. Now straight up out of the three foundries, Suros is my choice of favourite it really is. 
From the weapon designs to the weapon perk customization to match the combat situation you are in or going into, Sugos is definitely my choice of foundry. Most of us have saw how dominant Sugos can be in the era of the Sugos regime PvP days. And I've got a funny feeling the Sugos will own once again. Now the update does state that these three foundries will offer more weapons than what we've seen so far. And they are holding back on a number of armament categories for us to discover as the Taken King escalates. They also state that there will be more weapon choices than ever and even the gunsmith will have ways to include us in his enterprise and there will be quests that will lead us to specific weapons too. Now I wonder if these foundries will include more than the three we know of from the updates as there are many more in the game as of now. Foundries like Act, Crooks Lamar, Tex and many more. Maybe these three foundries will be the start and they will open doors for us to see more weapon foundries later on down the line after the Taken King. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Now from the very start, we have seen a modern Surush and Hacker plastered all around the tower and there are even emblems you can get to represent these foundries. So it is good to see it all being rolled out and being slowly made sense of. Now a couple of other things I'd like to talk about before we call it a day on this video. In the update they mentioned the rotation of the Trials of Osiris maps which is a great thing in my opinion but even more so than that I think spawn rotating should have been the first thing they added I mean like some of these maps clearly offer an advantage depending on the spawn so why not change spawns each round that makes way more sense to add than adding map rotations but hey I'm sure Bungie have their reasons. I've said for quite a while though, I cannot take Trials seriously while it's being overrun by Fawns. So I'm basically trying to keep clear until the 2.00 patch comes out. Talking of updates, hotfixes and patches, they do say in the update that we'll be getting a patch next month or a hotfix next month. So stay tuned for more details on that. But guys, some interesting things to discuss down below in the comments section in terms of this update that was dropped yesterday like i said if you missed it and want to read through all it is actually quite interesting so you should check it out i'll link it in the video description tell me what you think about these foundry weapons down below in that comment section and the overall update thanks for stopping by as always and peace out until next time peace